Hi. Hi. What's your name? Kim. Kim. Hi. Kim. Hi. Nice to um, see you in person again. When I'm seeing them, usually mm -hmm. in person. That's. <laughs> I think that's a good thing. <laughs> um. Anyway, one of the um, things that I think about a lot, and and this is actually, I'm really grateful for this opportunity to to chat with somebody about this. Um, is about the duality of spirit and human and the back and forth and being kind of comfortable with being a spiritual being when I'm maybe not being such a great human mm -hmm. or, or, you know, in enjoying things that I think um, might not be qualified as being spiritual. Um, normal things like driving down the, flow, the road really fast and listening to loud music and singing my brains out or, you know, rocking it or, you know, having a few pops with friends and maybe a few too many pops and mm -hmm. thinking, boy, am I really deviating off my, my, my spiritual path? Am I kind of neglecting myself in, in spiritual capacity or, doing wrong because when when i hear about people doing spiritual practice they're you know going to kirtans they're meditating they're there and there's no real ordinary life to it there's no um no human experience to it and i'm kind of wondering i'm not sure I'm, what do you mean there's no human experience to it well um i i think of those as more as as enlightened kind of more more um, just spiritual experiences when you're doing the meditation and, and there, there aren't um, conversations about, I don't know, when, in coming here and, and being on the subway and, you know, there's all these people around and, and I guess I'm, I'm trying to find the, the connection of spirit in the everyday life. So when you're driving down the freeway, where are you? Driving down, oh, well. Who's driving? Me. When you're, when you're having a pop, who's popping? Me. When you're meditating, who's meditating? Me. When you're chanting, who's chanting? Me. Next question. So that's it. It's just life. It's just life. Yeah, you're, 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 uh, you're uh, projecting something onto, you think this is spiritual and that's not spiritual. How would that be? It's just your life. And you, every, when, every action creates, is a seed that creates more like itself. So if you want to create openness and clarity and kindness and compassion, then you have to practice openness and kindness and clarity and compassion. It's not that it's better than anything else, but if you want to calm the heart, calm the mind, you have to pay some attention to that. It doesn't mean you can't, it's not like there's spiritual life and worldly life, it's just your life, every day. You know, and, that, and that's the thing that, that well, yes, obviously that's the thing that's tripping me up, is that, that it feels like the spiritual life is 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 like out there. It's up there. It's mm -hmm. not here, and it's not ordinary. And I and and I hear. I guess I might get caught up in some of the trappings of of the people that I hear that they're like, oh, I meditate 55 minutes every day, and I go and I do this practice and that practice, mm -hmm. and and so I'm they like, get a, they get a big ego about meditating. What good is that? And so it is okay <laughs> if I'm like. You know, you, yeah, just yeah, you. It's okay just, to be you. Just and it's tell them I like, said so. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, that's good. That's really good. Who else? Who else can you be? Well, you can just be you, no matter I what you know, do. I, and you can only want what you want, and that will that that drives what you do. That 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 programs what you do in your day. You can't be somebody else, and you can't. Please don't imagine that that just because somebody's meditating they're they're more spiritual than you More spiritual me has no meaning it has no meaning at all 
are they kind? Are they compassionate? Are they caring? Or they're, or they're just reactive jerks like everybody else. We're all reactive jerks. We react all the time. And you're even reacting to your own projections about these people and judging yourself. Guilty. What good is that? <laughs> you know, don't bother. Why, do you bother? Why bother? That's a program that's running in you to judge yourself and evaluate yourself and see yourself in a certain kind of way. And imagine that you're not doing enough or high enough or spiritual enough because you're thinking these people, because they do this, they are. But, you know, who knows what secrets they're hiding, what darkness they have to deal with that you can't see. So what, what would you say, you know, for an ordinary human being? Are there any, is there anything else except ordinary human beings? No. Great saints are the most ordinary. They're the ones with no imaginations, no pretensions, no false appearances, no selfish agendas. They're the real ordinary human beings. They are who we should, we, we are working to become by el eliminating our greed and our fear and our shame and our selfishness and our, all the stuff that we carry around that's pushing us around that we don't know, we don't even see how it's making us, pushing us around. When you start to do some practice with an eye, with the, with the intention to just be with whatever is, not that imagine this is gonna make you somebody or something else that'll be better and more easy to love. When you just let yourself be you, little by little, you, little by little you settle. You settle into yourself and, and you become okay with who you are just the way you are with all the bullshit and all the nonsense. It's not an issue anymore. And those programs that, we're, that we grew up with and that we uh, absorbed from our parents and our school and our friends and our culture, little by little we can let go of those. So that's spiritual work, not attaining some kind of and the blissful state that, that you think is going to last forever and is probably already gone. And knowing all the right words and all uh, that. That's a bunch of bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. Because yeah. I can't remember those words. Neither can I. <laughs> yeah. I, I just can remember Ram. Ram, Ram. Yeah. yeah. That's it. All day long. And it's easy to say. Best I can do, Ram. Good. I can so, do that. Then do it. Yeah. Do it when, you, when you're putting yourself down, too. Do it when you're thinking somebody else has it together and you don't. Do it when you're feeling good. Do it when you're feeling bad. Do it when you're watching TV. Do it when you're taking a hit. Do it when you're driving too fast. Because it's always there because you're always there. Ram is the door, the window into our true nature. It's the name of what lives within us is who we really are. Not who we think we are. Not all the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves all day long. Ram is underneath that. So the repetition of the name, little by little, moves us more deeply. And then we see this stuff, but we don't see it from inside of it. We see it from like, oh, really? More of that? OK, let it go. So it's practice that's important. Not because you want to be spiritual, because you want to you wanna be you, not somebody else. Yes. Yeah. Um. I'll, if there's, I'll add one more thing to this and, and then kind of, mm -hmm. um, I know there's been a lot of talk in, uh, about things going on in this day and age, and I know that, that there's been some additional um, like meditation, online meditation um, that I've, I've seen. And, um, but in dealing with the issues of these psychopaths and I mean it just feels like there's a lot of stuff bubbling under the surface right now and mm -hmm. there's a lot more challenges not even under the surface it's all over the place it is yeah. it's like the abscess is broken the uh, what's broken abscess the the yeah. you know <laughs> it's been broken people just haven't seen it that's all mm. all we can do is calm ourselves down and do the best we can in our lives as our lives come to us. Uh, it, all I can do is chant. That's what I do. 
I can't solve the political issues in the world. I can't make peace in the world. I have to make some peace inside of me. And that's where it starts. So you can't blame the outside world for your lack of peace. No, I agree. I just, I, I think the what I'm wondering more about is how, how does it fall into being perfect? And I guess that's just something that we don't know. We won't. It's, that's a, a mistaken notion. Uh, there's relative reality, everyday world, and there's ultimate reality. They're two different things. Relative reality is what we are, what we do. Scurrying around like ants, crazy all day long, life this, dying, born, dying, doing this, all this stuff. That's relative reality. That has certain rules and regulations. Stop at the red, go at the green, all that. U ultimate reality or truth or perfection actually encompasses all of that. You can't think yourself into that. It does Thinking yeah. is part of relative reality. Experiencing deeply your own true nature will lead you to ultimate reality. And in ultimate reality, there's no questions. But we are not in ultimate reality. It's not something you think about. It's not something you solve with the thinking process. But as you begin to accept yourself, as you are with all your imperfections, all your sadness and your greed and your anger and your shame, as you begin to give some space to that inside of yourself, that space expands to the other people in your lives. And then it expands gradually more deeply to the whole universe. And ultimately, you recognize the way things are and you see why this is the way it is. And you see what the, the antidote to it is, which is to love oneself and start with oneself and give oneself a break. You can't give the rest of the world a break if you can't give yourself a break. That's how you get the strength to be really compassionate and kind and caring, by starting with yourself. And the people in your life, one by one, very difficult. You can't, you can't have one peace for the whole world if you can't, you know, if, you, if, you, if, if, if you're still fighting with your brothers and sisters. You know, you take your care of your mother and... <laughs> that goes without saying. <laughs> sure. They're just being who they are. They have every right to be who they are. It's not up to us to teach them anything. When you are calm and at ease with yourself, they'll feel some difference in you. Maybe they'll get scared and try to put you away because that's what scares people when somebody is not reactive, mm. you know? So uh, do the best you can every day. Do what you can to help the world every day, best you can. But recognize that you need to, you need to be aware of what your own motivations are and to keep on letting go of all that stuff all the stories we tell ourselves that we believe without any question. I'm not enough of this, I'm too much of this, I'm like that. We believe all that stuff because we've been rehearsing all these years. We forgot we're, uh, you know, we're acting in a play and those are the lines. We forgot who we are. So through practice we gradually remember our real nature. And that's perfect. Do do you have any suggestions in to like how about I think about karma too and about doing things that That's a good useless thing to do. Okay, good. I'm gonna stop <laughs> thinking about it. <laughs> well, well, karma everything is karma. Every thought is karma, every action is karma. Karma is simply planting seeds. Seeds that have been planted will come to fruition. Everything in our lives right now is a result of our karmas. They're blossoming right now. What more is to come to blossom, we don't know. But one thing is for sure, how we live in this moment and, and face and deal with and accept and eventually allow to exist in this moment and not react blindly to, that changes to those are planting seeds also. So instead of planting seeds of reaction, which will then grow to more of that, like anger, 
Somebody hits you, you get angry, karma. Somebody hits you, you see that it's coming out of their pain. They don't really mean to hurt you, but they can't help themselves. And they're creating karmas for themselves by doing that. Compassion will arise eventually for that person. That creates more compassion for you and whatever they're creating for themselves, they create. So this moment, how we live in this moment is the most important thing when it comes to karma. What's here is here. We can't change it in the moment. So what we can change and what we hope someday to get a vote about is how we react to everything in our lives as, as it arises, as they arise in our lives. That's the big thing. Big thing. Karma is a big thing. I mean, nobody... They say only a fully enlightened Buddha can really understand all the, the billions of interactions of karmic situations that have been going on since the beginning of time, you know. So all we can do is try to get here and deal with things the best we can. Don't try to understand it in your mind. It can't be understood. I know. Yeah. And explode. You know, people go to like psychics and stuff. I go to, every time I've been to a psychic, they always say, oh, you were a great king, or you were a great this and that life and that life. Why doesn't anybody tell me I was a schmuck on the street last life? You know, that, would I, that I could accept, you know? Why am I always, I'm not, I know me. They're just like, there's something, I'm not saying they're doing it on purpose, yeah. but there's something, they're, you know, they're reacting to who they see me as now, yeah. to some degree. Why wasn't I just a schmuck last life, you know? It's like, we want to be so great, we can't, you know, we can't just be us. That's the greatest thing of all, because you can't be anything else or anyone else. So let's embrace this and make this work as well as it can work, which is oh, pretty good when we get down to it. Enough. Okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.